Hey guys, this is Brian at Obedia, and I'm going to show you a feature today in Personas' Studio One 2, which is something that a lot of folks have been waiting for, and that's being able to do transient detection and editing in Studio One. So this is essentially going to allow you to warp your audio, so you can now cause your audio to play back at specific points and be able to time correct your audio. This is something a lot of folks have been asking about and it's now available in Studio One 2. So let's dive in and show you how we can make some quick usage of it. So I'm working with my drum folder track here. I've spoken about folder tracks in the past. They're really useful for being able to break my production up into different pieces. And so I have my drum folder track right here and I'm just gonna solo it. So this is just a couple mic overheads and a kick drum that I'm making use of. and I'm going to go ahead and show you how I can make use of some transient detection on one of these overhead mics that I'm currently working with. So here's my, my recorded audio on my drum top one. And I want to go ahead and start accessing the transient detection for these drums. So I'm going to go ahead and open up firstly the audio bend panel. So that's accessed by clicking on the audio bend button here at the top of Studio One. And now the audio bend panel is opened up. It's a couple different options that I have access to here, but the first one that I probably want to take a look at is the detection and the mode that I'm going to use. Now I have two detection modes for detecting my transients. Now if you're not familiar with transients, transient is essentially a passage of audio. It's where we start to see something really happen in the audio. So Right here where there's a large peak in the audio, this is a transient. This is likely a snare being hit or something along those lines. So you can see as I play back and I hit one of those transients, that's the sound of a snare happening. So let's say that I wanted to time correct that snare a little bit. Let's say it was a little bit off time and I wanted to fix that. I can first select the detection mode I would like to make use of. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and try standard because this is fairly straightforward and I don't want to go too crazy with this just yet. So I selected my detection mode and now I need to go ahead and click the audio waveform which I would like to apply my detection to. So I'm going to select my drums and now the analyze button next to my detection mode is clickable. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to get a small progress box right here. And this is going to tell me that Studio One is basically figuring out the transients in this piece of audio that I'm working with. So we'll just do a little bit of thinking. And when it's all done, I'm going to get a number of small blue lines. And now my waveform has become slightly translucent. Each of these blue lines is a detected transient. So if I zoom in a little bit right here by simply moving my mouse up into the ruler and using the scroll wheel on my mouse, you can see now that I can get in very close and take a look at each of these transients. So this is where the editing fun really starts to happen. Now what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and click on the bend tool. This can also be accessed by hitting the seven key on your keyboard. So I've selected the bend tool and now using the bend tool while I am in my transient editing mode for this piece of audio, I can do a couple of different operations. Firstly, I can draw a new transient. Let's say that Studio One didn't find all the transients that I wanted it to find. I can simply move my mouse around and quantized to my ruler grid, which I am currently set up to use, I can click to create a brand new transient. So now I have a new bend marker. Now I can move any of these bend markers around if I would like, and I can do this by simply moving the mouse over one of these bend markers, and you notice that my mouse icon changes slightly now. Now it's the bend tool. And I can click on one of these transients and I can grab it and I can move it. You can see that my waveforms are actually going to shift around based on where I move these transient markers. So again, as I move each of these around, I can actually change the timing and playback of this waveform in my current session. So I'm going to go ahead and solo this track and I'm going to mute my other drum tracks so that I'm only listening to this one. We'll listen to how that plays back. 
So you can hear that I can hear the slowdown happening a little bit there. So this is something that you want to go ahead and be careful with anytime you are editing transients. If you do a little too much, sometimes it's going to start to become apparent. Now you're going to notice that as I move this transient marker around, the audio will change in its shade and it'll change all the way from green to a very, very dark red. What this means is based on the intensity of the color, this is essentially going to show me how much stretching I'm doing to the audio. So right now I've done a lot of stretching to this one drum piece. So you can hear that. Whereas if I move this transient marker further to the right, you're going to notice that it's going to become less intense until it becomes green and now it'll play back normally although the timing's going to sound again a little different. You can hear there's a little bit of rushing right there to catch up with the beat. But that's because what's happening is this waveform is actually being told to catch up with Studio One. So this allows me to really easily edit these waveforms and make them conform to my timing. So again, if I know that there's a piece it was just rushed or played incorrectly, I can actually zoom in and making use of transient detection and th moving the edit markers I can actually change the playback of this and start to fix performances a little bit. So even there I actually managed to tighten up the snare just a little bit more and I haven't really introduced too much aliasing into the audio because you can see that Things are a little bit red here, but not that super dark red, which denotes that I've done a whole lot of stretching to the audio. Now you'll also want to take a look here at the top section of my audio bend panel at some of the different options that I have access to. If I click on this pull down menu, I have drums, I have sound, I have solo, and I have audio bend. Now typically if you are editing an audio track, you probably want to make use of audio bend because what this is going to do is it's going to process the audio with the correct algorithm. This algorithm will ensure that the transients are unaffected and uh, only stretch or compress the tail or the harmonic content that follows the transient. But again, I'm editing drums here, so this is also very useful for me to actually select the drums time stretch mode because I am editing drums. And so you'll want to experiment with this based on the form of audio that you are editing in your Studio One project because each of these different track time stretch options will affect your audio differently as you start to use the audio bend tool. Now you also have the action section here of the bend panel and most of the time you're probably going to use quantize. This is selected by default and if you're making use of quantize a strength and percentage slider is going to be displayed right here at the top and the strength setting will alter the start percentage uh, in the quantize panel and this provides a simple way to alter the strength of the quantizing process. Now you can also select the option for slice. If you select slice this will slice the selected event uh, using its bend markers on a, a more specific basis and this will give you different results depending on uh, on the different options that you select. So this is of course going to depend again on the type of audio that you're using. Now because I'm editing drums, slicing may be very useful, but of course if I want to be very accurate about my timing, I'll probably want to go ahead and make use of the quantize mode, which will allow me to very specifically quantize each of these different transients which I am making edits to to make sure that they stay as closely in time with my grid and my overall project as possible so that hopefully I won't hear the time correction too much because really ultimately that's something you want to be mindful of. You don't want to hear the time correction. You want it to be subtle enough that you can fix performance issues but also not be able to tell that you've obviously fixed a performance now, issue. Now if you don't want to view your bend markers anymore, you can simply click on the show hide bend marker tool right here. Now I've hidden all of my bend markers. If I want to show them, I can again just, again just quickly show them. And one more thing that I can make notice of here is the threshold. Now if I change the threshold, you're going to notice that I'm going to introduce more bend markers and if I drag this backwards I'm going to delete some of my bend markers. So when you're initially starting off editing your audio using bend markers you probably want to set your threshold a little bit low because having too many bend markers will sometimes 
give you a little bit of attention deficit disorder when it comes to editing your audio, and you may find that you bend too many notes and you may start to edit too often. So you want to find kind of a happy medium here. But if you really can't get your audio to sync up properly, you can drag your threshold up as high as possible and really give yourself the maximum amount of transients uh, in order to add and use your bend tool on. So you can see that this is actually a very powerful new option in Studio One. As I say, this is something that a lot of folks have been wanting for a very long time to be able to warp their audio and actually make uh, their recorded audio play back at the specific tempo which they decide and also be able to manually edit how that audio plays back. And now you can do that making use of the bend tool and bend markers and taking a look at your transient detection. So I hope that this is useful to you guys. As always, please stay in touch with me. My email address is brian at obedia.com. Find me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash obedia tutor and Facebook at facebook.com forward slash obedia tutor. Please give me a call. Work one on one with us and find out how we can help you to get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software and help you tame your technology, which is what we do best here at Obedia. Until next time, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next tutorial. Take care. <music>